Hi, I'm Steve from 1233D. This is the second day of the Smurf Rip Rap Festival 2024. Here we are at our own exhibition stand. We've snuck in early this morning to give you guys a quick guided tour of the venue while it's relatively quiet. Stay tuned. So this is the, the Voron design team stand. They are live building a, a trident at the venue. It doesn't look to be too far off. So I would imagine by the end of today that will be up running and printing away. So Print City, this is the MMU's campus printing division. We deal quite closely with Print City for a number of things. They come to us for filaments and that type of stuff. So, yep, these guys are here, obviously. The Sanjay Mortimer stand. The whole reason this event actually exists is to raise money for the charity, Sanjay Mortimer Foundation. So yeah, that's the whole purpose of the event. Sanjay Mortimer was one of the founders of Rip Rap Machines and sadly passed away. And that is the whole purpose of this event, is one, to raise money, and two, to pay homage to the guy that invented all of this. So here we have E3D. We deal quite closely again with E3D. We stock a wide range of E3D products. We have the the Revo. We have the Revo rotor, which has a little extruder built into the actual heat sink. That's quite a, a nifty, clever little design. We've got your unicorn high flow nozzles for your Creality printers. There's a cross section of the actual nozzle so you can see what you're getting. We have some Oxidian high flow nozzles. So again, you can see from the cross section how it works. Basically, it creates more surface area to melt the filament in a more efficient way. Claimed to be a 114% flow rate boost. That's a lot of filament. Bamboo Labs replacement, Oxidian hot ends. So these are an E3D direct replacement for Bamboo Lab machines. For anybody that doesn't know about the Oxidian, it's, it's a more expensive hot end, but it's coated. It'll allow you to print with hard materials and whatever else. So you're paying a little bit more, but the nozzle will ultimately last a lot longer. There's lots of little battle tanks around, all 3D printed. I think these are RC um, and used in the death race. We haven't seen that yet. I don't know if it's today or if we missed it yesterday, but if it was yesterday, this, this dude's in pretty good shape, so I don't really think he took a battering. Here we are at the Prusa store. Well, while we're here, we'll give you a little bit more of a close-up sneak peek at the, the core one. So obviously we had the privilege of seeing this unveiled at Formnex this year. The machine is very, very nice. The actual frame is metal finished in the, the traditional Galaxy Black. You've got the orange accents. It appears to be the same screen as that you've got on the Mark IV and the Mark IVs. This side here, you've got a nice built-in temperature and humidity gauge for the chamber. Your filament also sits inside here. I'm not gonna mess around with it because the guys at Prusa wouldn't be very happy if I broke their machine. At the top, you've got ventilation. Around this side, we have a nice little tool compartment very tidy keep your nozzles your spanners your tools build plates just everything in one place inside the machine we've got the next extruder linear rails and belt driven with one two three lead screws the same build plate that fits the mark four and everything else the door is unbreakable i have witnesses from joseph himself slamming it and whatever else so it's a Uncle Jesse proof door. These are on pre-order, so the, the core ones will be inbound. The XL5 tool head, again, very, very impressive machine. We already stock this on, on the website. These just save a whole lot of filament waste in terms of poops. We still have a prime tower, but we're not pooping. So we're cutting down the waste by half. It makes it quicker, more efficient, and they produce exceptionally nice prints. And then we'll move to the Mark IVs, which we have on our stall. Prusa have theirs hooked up, hooked up to the MMU, which is, as you can see, five colors currently running through the unit, producing some very, very nice gecko-y prints. So the LDO stand with the new turtle box. I had a conversation with the guys about it yesterday. We will be getting this in stock. It's a very, very worthwhile upgrade to anybody that's got a Voron machine or anybody in the, the wrap type style clipper based machine. You print the parts, the hardware supplied in the kit. The kit is not really that technically demanding to build according to LDO. It looks quite simple. There's just a, a few stepper motor or pancake motors, some limit switches, some cable into route. There's a couple of bit, bits of aluminium extrusion and whatever else, but overall it looks like a, a very, very 
easy build and they, they informed me that you interface it with the machine just by simply plugging in USB to your Raspberry Pi. It's a claim that we can, they can actually hook together or link 250 plus units which is insane. I don't think there's 250 different colours of filament. The little, little mini, mini upside down printers. Really, really clever how these work. Uh, the hot ends below. The cooling fan blows up around the print. The print sticks to the glass plate and basically moves upwards. And it all fits in a handy little suitcase. So you can take it away on holiday with you. No matter where you are, you can carry on printing. It looks like it's printed a Benchy in hot melt glue, which is novel. I think it's just to highlight the fact this is what I can do. You, you would no doubt be able to replace the Dremel hot melt glue gun with a proper extruder and produce the same method which if the bed moves i don't know how far the travel is it's quite a big big area to print on we have a we have a revo extruder here so we've got a filament extruder one end a hot glue gun at the other end clever a 360 printer very very clever so as you can see the build plate rotates it started off that way then it's gone that way to carry on the print. The filament these guys are using was very, very kindly donated by ourselves because they had run out. So we hooked them up yesterday and gave them some to carry on. This is actually what the pipe is printing with. A lot of time and effort will have gone into designing some of these, especially the, the very lovely, lovely fairy tale castle. I mean, there's a lot of work gone into that. So here we have Coca Press for all you chocolate lovers. We have a, a 3D printer that prints chocolate. <laughs> So I mean, I'd imagine that this would be absolutely outstanding for anybody that makes cakes or that type of thing. They could print decorations. I mean, some of the close-ups here, you're like roses and whatever else, that is just insane. If you were to do that with the old fashioned piping method, I would imagine that would take an awful long time and it would be nowhere near as precise as, as that. So yeah, it's very, very clever. We had, a, we had a quick chat with this guy before. When I see a CNC machine, I get quite, because it's where my roots developed. And now we've got the Miley V.2 being worked on. This is only a prototype version at the moment, but great looking machine. Yeah, it's basically a mill style CNC machine, which is very, very capable of milling metals from aluminium. Some guys have even brought down some, some actual steel parts that have been CNC'd on this machine, which is pretty incredible. I mean, that's not a small lump of metal. These kits are designed by Millennium Machines, but they, they're the brains behind the LDO kits, which LDO basically compile all the parts. You again, 3D print the printed parts, you assemble the machine, and that is what you get, a very, very beefy, capable milling machine. So we, we already, stock quite a lot of big tree techs products their vivid unit here in the flesh so a four color ams style unit i had a conversation with big tree tech about this um, they've said to me it probably won't be released until march of next year so march 2025 they're still working on a few aspects of the, the filament cutting system and whatever else and they have told me that for immediate launch this will be compatible with Voron machines. It won't be the whole range of clipper-based machines. They are looking into that, but the cutting system to make it compatible with every type of printer currently on the market, it's gonna take an awful lot of R&D to make sure it works across the whole array of machines. But nonetheless, definitely keep your eyes open for this. Then we have all of the boards. Big Tree Tech started on hardware boards. The founder, needed a component. He tried looking around everywhere. He could not find what he was looking for. So he designed and made his own and here we are. They make a whole range of boards but have expanded into extruders. It appears to be a tap for a, for a Voron. Touch screens, Panda Flow hot ends. These are in calibration. So that, that looks like a Revo, an E3D hot end. But the, the metal work and all the other bits and pieces are Big tree tech. We've got all the accessories, covers, breakout branch boards, panda claw gears. We have the cryo grip. And if you can see that, you've got a little tiny footprint down there with a ridiculously overhanging print and it's anchored there. This is cold. They're, this machine is not on. So how that stayed like that is testament to how well this build plate performs. Because if you touch that, that is 
freezing. So that is very, very clever. We will be getting these in stock, so keep your eye out for those on the website. And then we have all of their TFT touchscreen displays. I think this is the one that I have in our Warron machine that came with the kit. You've got large seven inch screens, K-Touch, plug and play, self-contained, the old style rotary knob, clicky click, and the Kraken board, Rodent, and Sayella, if that's how you pronounce it correctly. And then Big Tree Tech's own version of the Raspberry Pi. Very interesting. So here is the Death Racer booth run by Sam Prentice. He isn't here at the moment, but we'll try and catch up with him at some point today and have a chat, chat with Sam the man. So here we are at the, uh, the other side of the venue where is basically all of the, the creators are here. Chameleon 3D. We shall take one of these because I had a conversation with them yesterday. Uh, this is no longer for sale. You can now build it yourself, totally open source. And I asked him why he'd done this. And basically he replied with, he does not have time to produce this and live a fulfilled life. Fair play to him for just making it open source and releasing it to the community. So yeah, we will put a link to this in the description. Here appears to be a 3D printer made from printed blocks. From what I can see, the frame is literally printed blocks. Then you've got your linear rails and whatever else attached to the printed blocks. And you have a 3D printer. Construct 3D. Very, very nice bamboo wooden cabinet. These guys are UK based. This is their own designer machine that they produce and sell. They're very high end, R runs on clipper. You've got a larger fully enclosed model, core XY design. Looks to have an optical sensor for leveling, whatever else. So yeah, it's a nice looking, nice finish. A tool changing unit on this one. So they're probably printed with PLA, but we're printed with PLA currently here. We've got it enclosed. It's not that warm here, so there's not really a problem in closing the machine, but ultimately we'll be printing ABS and stuff on our on our machine, hence to why we put the enclosure on it. Very interesting looking Delta style printer. Trident, it looks like another LDO kit. A nice build, compact form factor. Difference between this and the 2.4 is the Trident uses lead screws to move the bed. Whereas on the 2.4, the bed is static at the base of the machine. Just to show some of the capabilities of 3D printing technology with FDM printers. These appear to be inlet manifolds for an engine. These are 3D printed. So material now is capable of it seeding very, very high temperatures and everything else. So really, depending on your material types and your material choices, you can produce parts like this which is quite impressive. Well, it's a Formula student car. So I can imagine that they're using this intake for, for their race car, which will be very, very impressive. I think we have sent these guys some of our filament. I know a lot of the university's racing teams have contacted us in the past for filament and whatever else. Uh, we'll just go over to the droid builders. We'll give you a, a sneaky peek at some Star Wars droids. They were flying around yesterday and very fun. Here we are now, Droid Builders UK. And look, lots of droids. These are all fully remote, actual, as accurate copies as they can make of a, a real working. You've got a small R2, but I mean, look, there's a life-size one here. I was talking to the guys yesterday, the amount of dedication these guys put into building these things is ridiculous. A five-year project. Don't let it put you off, build a droid. It would look great in your bedroom. So I think in summary, that is pretty much the event. Now it looks really calm, quiet, subdued. Trust me, Armageddon will be unleashed very shortly. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please do not forget to like, subscribe, and if you really want to, share. But bye for now, we'll see you on the next one. As always, we aim to have the most competitive 3D printer prices on the market. If you see any of our printers being sold by a mainstream retailer for less, please drop us an email using the link in the description and we'll do our very best to beat their price. Also, if you're watching from outside the UK, check the description for links to our European 123 3D sister stores.